Hi everyone, this is Gray over at Wakazashi's Tea House in Japan. How are you doing? Are you good? Are you Genki? Today I want to tell you a bedtime story. And I'm going to read from a book by an author called Jeff Noon. Now, Jeff Noon is a British novelist, a short story writer, and a playwright whose works make use of wordplay and fantasy. I read his first novel, which is entitled Vert, V U R T, in 1993 that came out and loved it. It's a weird kind of little bit cyberpunk esque story set in Manchester, which um, you know plays with reality, what's real, and it has a, a kind of a drug-based story, um, story theme to it as well. It's about. Let me just read a little bit of the synopsis for Vert. This is so cool. And how I've not read this in years yet. I'm talking like 1993. It's years ago, so I don't know how well it holds up. Just let me get the page ready. Are we there? Is it working? YouTube. Showing no picture for some reason. Okay, we're good. We're good to go. Nosferatu's in the chat. How are you doing, mate? Are you good? Are you Genki? Can you hear me okay? Last time I had some problems with OBS streaming, so do let me know if um, if the picture's a bit dodgy, it doesn't matter, but as long as you can hear me, that's the most important thing. Where are we? So, yeah, looking good. Everything's five by five, as you say, down at the wreck. <laughs> okay, so this, um, what was I going to do now? I was going to read a bit from um, the synopsis for Vert. If you've never read Vert, I recommend it. But as I say, it's probably a bit dated now. I don't know how well it's aged. 1993. How many years ago is that? 2003 and 2023. So 31 years ago. Vert, which is not the book I'm going to read from, tells the story of Scribble and his gang, the Stash Riders, as they search for his missing sister, Desdemona. Vert refers to a drug-shared alternate reality that's accessed by sucking on colour-coded feathers. There we go. It won the um, Arthur C. Clarke Award, New Book Award, like in science fiction, back in 94. Very cool. And today I'm going to read from Falling Out of Cars from 2002. Great title, by the way. Falling Out of Cars is a road novel set in a near future world where information based civilization is falling apart. It follows the journey of Marlene. Marlene? Henderson and Peacock as they drive around England on a mission to gather fragments of a mirror that may be at the heart of the world's affliction. Falling out of cars is the record Marlene keeps, or tries to keep, so it's basically her diary, her journal, um, of her quest to flee from her past. Despite her daily dose of lucidity, Marlene is gradually succumbing to the malady, and it gets harder and harder to distinguish dream from reality hallucinations from events. Okay, thanks, Nos. That's awesome. So, as I say, just sit back, relax, play a game, um, chill out, do a bit of meditation, put me on the background and let me read you a story. Here we go. Falling Out of Cars, 2002, Jeff Noon, Chapter 1. It was bad last night. Very bad. The worst yet. There were too many of them. A family and all of them crazed. We had to leave empty-handed. Henderson took a knock to the skull. She's blaming me. Finally, we holed up in a bed and breakfast outside the city. A dark and nasty place it was, with people stumbling up and down the corridors all night long, moaning, lamenting. Difficult to sleep. Blood in the toilet bowl, crap on the walls. All the mirrors, and even the screen of the television, all covered over with black paint. But it was cheap and safe. No questions asked, even at the three of us wanting to share the one tiny room. And then, a late start this morning, and many miles yet to cover. Another job. What good will it bring us? I feel confused dispirited after last night. We all do. Nobody's talking. We made a stop for lunch. The best we could find was a mobile kitchen parked in a lay-by, a few tables set around it. The food was okay. Afterwards, we took our medicine. Peacock said that we had to keep it sweet from now on, no matter what might happen. He's got a thing about rules. Henderson made a face. 
A young kid wandered over from the next table. She was six or seven years old, with dirty brown hair and a slightly dazed look in her eyes. She asked me if I wanted to play with a doll. I pulled the little string, as directed, and the doll spoke to me in a sick, miserable drawl. Not a single word could be heard properly, but the girl was delighted, as though the toy had declared its undying love. She jumped up and down, squealing. And then, watching the girl laugh and listening to the broken voice, I felt a pain steal upon me, this sudden, cold yearning. My heart closed up against it, but too late, far too late. What can I do? Where can I go? Hours of travelling. No real problems until we saw the roadblock ahead. Police lights whirled and fluttered in the soft twilight. Intrigue, danger, lives lost or being lost. The crying of a siren. Cars were being channeled into a single lane. A uniformed officer giving us hand signals as we passed along. I looked at him through the side window. He was young, nervous. His white gloved hands moved through a series of repeated patterns, one for each vehicle. It should have been simple enough, an order to pull over, to let the ambulance through. Instead, it looked as though some complex ritual was being performed, or else a primitive tribal dance. The officer's mouth was covered by a surgical mask. Don't forget, this is written back in 2002. Interesting line there. T. Earl Grey, hot. No, that's not part of the story. Now his two hands moved tenderly, caressing the air, and turned upward towards me, directly. A lover's hands, but still, I couldn't make any sense of the shapes he was making. I would have to be careful. Slowly, we moved along the line of cars, towards the trouble. A large, articulated truck had fallen over onto its side. It must have come from the opposite direction, driven at speed to break through the central barrier, and with enough energy to climb halfway up the steep, grassy incline. I imagine the vehicle teetering at this highest point, and then falling, and sliding down to where it now rested, jackknifed, the long container on the slope of grass, the driver's cabin blocking a good part of the motorway. Close your window, said Peacock. Why? That's what they want. Police officers moved round the site. The day was only just touched with darkness, but they were already setting up a small floodlight, or trying to. The light was pulsing to a strange rhythm, shining brightly for a second, and then dying, fading, coming bright again, over and over. And then the beam swung upward suddenly into the sky, the purple sky, the first of the stars. Cold blue Venus had only just arisen. And now the crashed lorry reared above us. It looked enormous from this close-up, like the side of a house. An angry noise started. Sparks flew through the air. A fireman was holding the blade of a cutting device against the one exposed door of the cabin. Nearby, the ambulance crew was standing ready with their medical kits and stretcher. The poor driver, trapped inside there, dead or alive. What had gone wrong? We had ground to a halt in the line, near enough to see that one part of the lorry had spilled its contents onto the road. Wooden boxes lay scattered about. Glass sparkled from the tarmac. A cloud of dust hung in the air. My head was swimming with the detail of it all. There was too much to take in, too much information. I felt the noise taking me over. The beam of light circled around and the crackle of sparks was caught in its pathway. A cascade flower of violet and gold bloomed behind my eyelids. There was a smell of burning. A dry metallic taste filled my mouth. My ears were buzzing. The sound of the blade. What the fuck? It was Henderson speaking to me. 
She twisted around in the passenger seat. Her face, with its tangled mass of hair, was painted with colour as the floodlight bathed the car. Marlene? Her voice was slurred and distant. The light swung away from us, but now the trail of sparks appeared to dance around the car's interior. Marlene, you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I used the technique that Peacock had taught me, not to shut the eyes, but rather to concentrate on just one tiny aspect of the world. I had my notebook in my lap and I looked down, focusing all my attention on the cover image. For some reason, I felt embarrassed. I mustn't let them know I'm suffering, not this much. And so I kept my eyes tight on the notebook, closing out all other images to let the picture form in my head. Holding it there. Holding. It seemed to work. The feelings passed through me. The sparks, the light, the blades fire. And I looked up again as a policeman banged on the side of the car, telling us to move on. There was a heavy security presence, more than I'd seen in a long while. All of the officers wore white masks. Some of them were armed. I was puzzled by this until we saw the floodlight sweep over the company logo painted on the lorry's side. Oh shit, said Peacock. Will you look at that? I'm looking, said Henderson. It was a large open eye, blue, surrounded by a swirl of gold. And I knew then just what the cloud of dust promised. Speckles of the stuff collected on the windows as we drove along, a bright yellow glitter. The police were there to stop us from stealing the fallen load. But I just wanted to climb out of the car right there and then, even as we gathered speed. This crazy urge came over me to taste the powder fully for once, to run through the particles of it open-mouthed and breathing the dust in deeply, overdosing. Are you still there? How's it going? Let's just check in everything. So we have, oh my god, there are people here. What's going on? Unbelievably. We have Zax in the chat, Salty Travelling C. Dempsey, how are you doing? Good to see you. Fear Monarch. <laughs> Fearmon is talking about too many shrooms at parties and sitting in chairs, listening to music. Is it like melting into the back of the chair, Fearmon? You know what I mean? Yeah, I know that feeling. It's been a while though. Uh, are you good? How are you doing? Are you Genki? I say I'll be taking little breaks and uh, popping in to say hello to the chat. And don't worry if the picture's a bit, a bit uh, choppy. It's looking good so far on OBS. I'm not using StreamYard, so yeah, all is looking good, and I'm just going to keep going. But I recommend Jeff Noon, if you've never read, never read him. He's a Manchester man, a Manchester writer, and his first four books he set in a kind of weird future version of Manchester, as my stomach just goes insane, <laughs> growling like that. Oh my God. Yeah. Definitely check out his first one, Vert, V, V-U-R-T. It's, it's weird, it's good, it's strange. Can you imagine sucking on a psychedelic feather, taking you to like a, a strange reality? There we go. But let's get back to the book. I was getting paranoid because, you know, you never know, do you, with YouTube, what's going on? Okay, here we go. My name is Marlene Moore. This is my book. It's the kind of notebook a teenager might buy with a picture of a tiger on the cover. A tiger with blue stripes. Inside, the paper is thin, almost translucent. The ink from my pen seeps through. All these lines of writing, shadows, glances. This is a story. Events, feelings, everything that's happened to me in the last few weeks. But now, as I flick through the book, I see only the mess I've made. Words, sentences, paragraphs, whole pages, scoured with black marks, mistakes. The noise gets in everywhere. Pages are ripped or torn out completely. Some discarded. Others taped into new positions. There are smudges of dirt, of food, of blood. The marks where once a pressed flower lay. Stains of chlorophyll, pollen, 
the tiny fragments of pearl. This is the story. I've decided to make a new start. I will begin again from what I'm sure of. The events of this day, this night, just gone. Many times before, I've done this, and always, each time, the confusion takes over. I can bring to mind scattered details, emotions, overall moods. It's just that something gets lost along the way. The noise is a dark hand, a soft hold, slow poison, sickness. It will not leave me alone. And yet, I will have such moments of lucidity, a sudden pain of memory, whole and vibrant, a fleeting glimpse that must be caught hold of immediately, or else be lost forever. I must be strong, I have to keep writing. There is no other escape, especially now that I seem to be getting worse. This is the book. I have taken the photograph from its pocket on the inside front cover. Perhaps the light is flickering. There is a slight fuzziness to the image. The faces are smeared. Only by holding the photograph at one precise angle can I make out clearly the gentle smile. Angela. These words. Moving south, trying to reach the new town by nightfall. We've passed through a cloud of gold. Beyond this, the roads empty out once more. Most of the traffic seems to be avoiding this area, and what vehicles there are move slowly. There are too many accidents. Every few miles we see another car abandoned at the roadside. Some of them with evident damage of a crash or a fire. But mostly the vehicles stand there forlorn, unmarked, as though the driver had simply stepped out for a moment and then decided to walk away. This is the kind of image that would turn up in the science fiction books I read when I was a teenager. The abandoned car. I thought it a supremely romantic image, the symbol of a dying civilization. I suppose that most teenagers have this strange desire to be alive during the end of days. But now, becoming commonplace, the image has lost its poetic allure. The cars have been vacated, simply because the drivers can no longer trust themselves. Can there be any other reason? Peacock and Henderson were talking about the crashed lorry and the cloud. They were arguing. Peacock had wanted to stop, to watch the containment operation a while longer, maybe even to pick up a few stray supplies. The drug. Our daily salvation, he calls it. But Henderson had said no. We drive on. She's more or less taken control of the mission. I've travelled around the country with this couple for a little over a week now. Not long. They found me in the public gardens that night, digging at the soil with my bare hands. That was a low point. The black flowers that grew there with their overpowering scent. I'd followed the clues to this place, this small patch of ground, and yet my hands pulled up only dirt, roots, worms, stones. Where was it? Where the fuck was it? I was on the edge of giving up when I heard Peacock's voice saying, Now there's a sight. And they helped me then. We pulled the treasure from the earth, the shining treasure. It was odd, them helping me, and I'm still not sure what they're looking for beyond a share in the takings. Certainly, I wouldn't have got this far without them. Peacock's a big ugly brute. He wears a brown leather pork pie hat and a suede car coat. I've seen him without the hat only a few times, revealing the butchered razor cut left over from active service. He can turn his hand to most things. He does most of the driving, for instance, even when he's suffering. It's all a question of using the drugs properly, but I'm getting worried about him. Easy enough to get along with, except sometimes his face will shut down hard. It's a wounded face, and the hardness held there like a mask, not to hide the wounds, but to show them off. I've seen a good few times already the violence of the man, the war, his time overseas, the cold distance that will come into his eyes. But there's something behind the toughness, I'm sure there is. 
I want there to be. Something being kept at bay. I don't even know his first name. He's got a gun. Henderson, or Bev, as Peacock calls her in their friendly moments, is even more of a mystery. In many ways, she's tougher than Peacock. More volatile, I mean. More prone to anger. And sometimes this is useful, and sometimes it isn't. Dressed in green tracksuit bottoms, a sports top, flashy trainers, she's always ready to leap into action. She doesn't drink much, she doesn't smoke. Every morning she goes through a complex Tai Chi routine. She's in her mid-twenties, a couple of years younger than Peacock. She's the least affected of us. I haven't a clue what she did before this journey. Just wandering around, I imagine. Because I know it's not easy finding direction these days. We're all lost together, all of us, all the people. Along these tangled pathways, briefly meeting and then to part. Strangers, only strangers. Sometimes I can't help suspecting that Henderson actually enjoys the chaos. The sickness allows her character to be revealed without need of excuse. And then I think back to what I was doing at her age, ten years ago. I was just married, pregnant, my career on hold. We had moved to Oxford, a new house. Everything seemed perfect. Well, normal, I suppose. The start of a proper life. But now, all of that feels like a mirage, a story of mist. The truth is, And despite all the things we've been through together this last week, I still can't bring myself to trust Henderson, nor Peacock. Neither of them, not completely. There is no easy decision. We have not yet talked about last night, except for a few comments from Henderson about the pain in her head. It wasn't our first failure, and perhaps we can make it up later on, I don't know. I feel like I'm coming to the end of something, to the end of what I can give. A few more days, perhaps, a few more collections, and then I want to get the case back to Kingsley and get the money for it, just to make a living. But it's not that. It's not just the money. I don't know what it is. I keep returning to Angela. That last time, that one last time at the hospital, watching her there through the screens, I wanted to go in to get in the room with her, to hold her. Even though I knew the dangers, the dangers of contact, of touching, of letting her see me there, of talking to her even, still, I wanted to. Maybe I knew already this would be the last time. I don't know. And I let the doctors warn me off, as always. It was shameful turning away. My only child... Perhaps these feelings affected my decision earlier tonight. We were approaching the turn-off that would lead us toward the new town when Henderson said, Look now, here's a sad one. It was a hitchhiker standing by the side of the road, a young woman. Keep driving, I said. What does that card say? asked Peacock. I watched the hitcher as we passed. She was holding a piece of card with some letters scrawled on it. It was nearly dark by now, and the woman was shining the beam of a small torch onto the card. But still, I couldn't make out what was written there. She made a rude gesture with her fingers as we drove by. Fucking cheek, said Peacock. Whatever, said Henderson. What? That's why it says the sign, what, wherever, wherever. Can you believe that? Wherever, said Henderson. What? That's what it says, the sign. Wherever. Can you believe it? We'd seen a lot of these hitchhikers during the last week. All of them seemed young. A lot of them women. Very often, they were walking along the motorway shoulder, far from any slip road or service station, as though they'd simply dropped from the sky. I don't know what they were running from, and it was best to just ignore them. I thought, just keep to the job in hand, no distractions. 
I turned to look through the back window. The woman was already lost in the dark air. And then, and for some reason I'm still trying to work out, I said, No, wait, turn around. This is better than audible. <laughs> I said, salty, travelling sea. <laughs> Henderson, that's me, fear mark. I tell you, I'm... I, I make mistakes when I'm, when I'm reading them, obviously, many times. And if I make a silly mistake, I'll just um, reread the passage. Because, as I've mentioned before, the idea of these is to um, kind of edit out the in-between parts, the in-betweeners, and just drop it on, on YouTube as a kind of 30-minute, you know, but just about half an hour bedtime story, a passage from, you know, a book. It can be a book. It's going to be... I might even do do some graphic novels as well, but that's going to be more difficult to narrate, you know, because you're going to have to describe the pictures as well. You know what I mean? So we'll see how it goes, but that's the idea. I've been working on the last one. It's taken me ages just to um, to edit it to like, I got it to a magic number. Do you know the magic number 33? I thought if I can get to th around 33 minutes, I'll be happy. And I just cut the rest out. But even then, you know, I'm not a perfectionist, but I don't like long pauses or, you know, any kind of mistakes. I'll, I'll just cut those out and it, it takes ages. As any of you know who edit videos, mamma mia, the editing, you know, it does take a long time. And what's it for at the end of the day? It's for the love. It's for the love of the thing. It's for the love of doing it, isn't it? Right? Isn't that right? It's just grey. Deluded Grey just likes the sound of his own voice, right? <laughs> That's a, I've heard that. I've heard that before. No, I'm joking. I used to make that joke um, about my brother. <clears throat> Mick, if you're in the chat. If you're in the chat, drop a comment, say hi. I hope you're good. I hope you're Genki. But yeah, I think even he's, he used to make that joke about himself as well. He's a very fine narrator. He's also a singer. A singer in a band, you know. He's a good front man. He's got a good voice. And um, he's like, yeah. At the end of the day, you know, I like the sound of my own voice. So he um, he used to like reading out books to his, uh, his, I guess his his friends or his girlfriends in the past, maybe. So what's going on with you guys? Anything good? No, that's right. We're saying bring back Wakizashi Radio. I tell you what, mate, they just nuked it. I mean, it's still there. It still exists, but there's nothing on that apart from my introduction video. Any stream with any music. You know, I don't mind it getting blocked in certain countries. Of course, you, you know, you, you don't even bother trying to monetize it. It's impossible. But the last one I did, that crazy ghost stream that for some reason got like uploaded onto my main channel. Still, people don't believe me about that, but it did. It happened. It wasn't a drunken night. I was um, I was working on like a review and suddenly I got this, this email popped up saying, uh, your content has been flagged for a copyright, uh, music copyright. So I was like... Well, I haven't even uploaded anything, and I checked, and it was, it was, I think it was the final stream I did, the final Wakizashi Radio stream, and it was on the main channel. It, it's still there, but of course I, I've unlisted it. You can't see it, and now it's completely blocked. It's like, I don't know how many. It's like blocked, double blocked, triple, quadruple blocked. You know, in in every country in the world, even the universe, Venus, Mars, bloody Pluto, if that's even a planet. Just ridiculous. Oh, salty nose, said salty. Remember, no distractions. Good day, San, says DJ. Ronnie G, how are you doing? Ronnie, are you good? Are oh, you Genki? I'm reading a bit. Well, I was reading, but now I'm just, um, I'm blabbering on, waffling. That's what it's all about, isn't it? It's about the waffles. Ah. If you guys and girls, if you had a good week, I've had a good week. It was very busy. I was wrecked last night. Um, did a recording with um, Weird Science Jim. We did, it's not actually the next issue of Animal Man, it's a secret origins with Animal Man and Man Bat. And it's just, of course, the Animal Man section from that. It was good, it was decent. It was written by, you know, by the main writer, by Grant Morrison, back in 1989, April, that's the publication date. So we went through that, um, because of the time difference, Jim Jim starts recording about nine in the morning his time, so it's what is it? It's eleven p.m. my time, and I'm I'm just an old an old man now. I can't stay awake. I'm not a night owl anymore. So I was like, oh Jim, you know, can we make this quick? 
But when we started, when you know, when you start recording, when you start talking, I, I just got genki, genkied up and I was okay. And we went on for about, we were talking for about an hour, but we didn't record for an hour. I think it was about just under 30 minutes. And then um, I think Jim's edited it. He's put it on his, his Patreon, put it on the podcast and sent me a, an edited version. It got it down to about 20, I think 25, 27, 27 minutes maybe. So I'm impressed, but I've, I've not... Um, I've not uploaded that yet. I've got to work on it. I only got it about, what time was it? About an hour ago, just before lunchtime. So I was like, okay, I'll do that tomorrow. I'll do it on Sunday, my time. That'll be up for members. Just keeping those uh, members now because, as I say, they're on they're on Jim's Patreon as well and it's behind a, a very small paywall. So it's not really fair to put them on YouTube for free. Free. Freedom. Nothing's free anymore, is it? Guys and girls. I know, what a sellout, Gray. Wagizashi, what you like. In the vain attempt to get more members, I've actually lost, <laughs> I've lost uh, quite a few, so there we go. But that's life, that's how it goes. These are hard times, guys, aren't they, girls? I know, these are hard times. It's it's hard in Japan as well. You know, I've talked about it before, but we've, we've been stuck in recession pretty much since I got here 20 years ago. And, you know, there's no such thing as a, as a pay rise in Japan unless you're working for the big companies, you know what I mean? So anyway, enough whinging. Let's go back to, what was I doing? Was I reading from a book? I see the title of this book, Falling Out of Cars, and I get like flashbacks to an old song. What's it called? I can't remember who, we, who, the, who the group is. can't remember the name of the song. <laughs> it's like, can you guess this song? I don't know the name. Don't know the band. You know, it's got, it's got a couple of words in it, you know, about cars. Anyway, falling out of cars. Let's continue. These are really cool. They're like little, really small mini chapters. Actually, can I, can I show you that before I continue? Let's see if I can do this. Come on, Gray. It's all live. It's all unscripted. Let's see if I can share my screen, share the Kindle. Yes, I can. I, I just got to, uh, ooh, it's all, it's all smaller from my last comic book review. Okay, let's make that big. Give you an idea, look how small these chapters are. Hang on a sec. That's what they all say. <laughs> look how small these chapters are. Right, where are we? Make it full screen, kind of. There we go. Get back to Kindle so I can show you. So, I mean, this is the next one. There are some really small, I like these kind of chapters where they're really, really short. The last one was the longest, it was about two or three pages. There we go, as you can see, that's all. But I just like his writing, I like it. It's, um, you know, it's quite poetic. It's, he likes to play with language a lot. And I like his, you know, his subject matter. He's about alternate experiences, you know, freeing, not freeing your mind, what's the right word? Seeing other worlds, other realms, you know, exploring the, that kind of thing. You can't say, can you say drugs, drugs on YouTube anymore? Probably not. But anyway, just to give you an idea, that's what it looks like. Okay, let's stop that. Hey, it's me. I'm back again. How are you doing? Oh, Miss Martin Muses is there. How are you doing? Wait, which one are you talking about? Best book ever. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm totally, I'm all over the place. Distracted. Gary Newman, Cars. It wasn't that. Was it Snow Patrol? Did they have a song about cars? It's really like a, it's a really, mm, I don't even know the word. What's the word? It's slow. It's kind of balladic. It goes something like, if I was here. No, if I, if I just laid here. Would you forget me and just... So I, uh, so I, anyway. Dun, 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 dun. Zach, do I have a wrench? Oh, that's right, Zach. I took your wrench off you when, uh, when you were spazzing out in the chat with Cobra and Nos. I was like, Jesus, giving me panic attacks. Um, banning people. No, I'm joking. Zach, Zach would never do that. Songs about cars. <laughs> they shouldn't be too hard, says Fear Monarch. Oh, dear. But so, yeah, this all came, this crazy waffle came from the title, Falling Out of Cars, by Jeff Noon. Let's get back to it. Let's get, have a bit of tea. <clears throat> Join me for some tea and company. 
And remember, I love you all. All except Nos. Here we go. I'm joking. Last night, when we shared that one room, that dreadful bed and breakfast place, there were only two beds, two singles. I was constantly being woken up by people moving along the corridor, but at one point, I came awake to realise the sounds were coming from the roof itself, from the other bed. A soft moaning, tiny cries, gasps of breath. Of course, I'd realised early on that Henderson and Peacock were an item, even if they hardly showed much affection in public. But still, it was uncomfortable being there in the same room. They were surprisingly gentle, given their outward natures. Perhaps they were restraining themselves on my behalf. I don't know. What could they be feeling? How would the sickness affect their pleasure? What would it turn into? The noise would surely be overwhelming at such moments. A touch might drag like a blade or fall like dust blown across the skin. All those broken messages. And then I tried to think about the last time I'd made love. When was that? I just couldn't bring it to mind. There seems to be no ruling to how my memory works. Certain events will stay with me, free as yet from infection. But lately, and more and more, I can feel the past drifting away, beyond hold. The weeks, the years gone by, one by one, all drawn over by confusion. Love? Where was love? The last time? Had it really been with my husband? Has there been nobody since then? Oh, but where has the closeness gone to? Where has it gone? I'd like to know that too. Answers on a postcard to G'day, Wakizashi's Tea House. Bollocks. Henderson was all against it, of course. She was calling me some bad names and saying how she was in charge. I agree that she was, but that I'd started this and I would finish it how I pleased. I told her it was my car and above all, I had the key to the suitcase. Fine, she said, whatever. It's only till the next stop, said Peacock. Fine. The road was completely empty. We did a wide U-turn and then travelled back until we passed the young woman once more. She wasn't even looking at us now, but just standing there with her head lowered. The sign had fallen to the ground. And then we made another turn to bring us round to the proper direction. She's trouble, said Henderson. Look at her. I could see that she was even younger than I'd first imagined. A teenager. Peacock stopped the car, but the girl made no move towards us. She just stood there, looking at the car. I wound down my side window and asked her where she was going. I thought the girl might give me a smile at the least. Instead, she just repeated the word on the sign. Wherever. So then I told her our destination, and she said, The new town? That's the one. It's not far enough. Henderson spoke to her. Girl, if you want it, get in. Otherwise, we're out of here. The teenager looked down the road as though another car might appear at any moment, but nothing did. Not even the hint of a distant headlight. The moon had followed Venus into the sky. Everything was quite still. Okay. I opened the door for her and then moved along the back seat so that she could slide in beside me. You want to move that? She said. It was a suitcase. I pulled it off the seat, down to the floor of the car, and then we set off once more. I introduced the three of us, but the girl made no reply, and we travelled in silence for a while. Well, this is fun, said Henderson. The sodium lamps passed by, some alight, some dark, and I caught repeated glimpses of the new passenger. She was a neat, serious-looking young woman, 
perhaps 16 or 17 years old. A girl, really. Her black hair was knotted together at the back of her neck, and she was dressed simply. A well-worn denim jacket, a scarf, a pair of jeans. She kept a large grey bag slung around her body, her only possession. I don't think she'd been travelling for very long. There was a softness to her face, set off by a smear of purple on her lips, and a cosmetic beauty spot on her right cheek. It was a fashion thing, I remembered, amongst the young. It was the last good fashion in place when the trouble began. The girl had kept it going for some reason, when all the mirrors had sickened and been turned aside. Applied in the dark. And she looked at me then, with her dark eyes held tight behind a pair of rimmed spectacles. What did she want? It wasn't a thing that people did much anymore, maintaining eye contact. It was too much like a bad reflection. Unlawful. Dangerous, even. Peacock, Henderson and myself were forever avoiding each other's gaze. And yet here was this young woman staring at me, intently. I had to turn away. So then, girl, said Peacock, what's your name? Tupelo. Tupelo? What kind of a name's that? It's a town in the States. Oh, you're American? No. Where do you come from? I asked. But the girl would not answer, and that was the end of that. And we drove on in silence once again. We'd left the motorway now. Peacock started to explain about how the new town would maybe have some kind of security around it. A border zone, walls, gates, maybe a guard or two. We need to be careful, he said. After last night, we can't let Kingsley down. What are you people up to? asked the girl. Who's Kingsley? Never you mind, said Henderson. Tupelo picked up my notebook from the seat. I'd been working on it during the day. Is this yours? I told her it was, and she flipped through the pages, here and there. You're a writer? A journalist. She looked through the book for a while longer. What could be seen there in the fading light? You working on a story now? Yes. About the sickness? Again, her eyes met mine. About the sickness, I answered. That seemed to satisfy her, and nothing much else was said. Peacock stopped the car, right there on the roadside. He got out. We all wondered what the problem was. There was a wrenching sound and a curse as Peacock pulled at the driver's wing mirror. Eventually, he raised up one booted foot and kicked the mirror clean away. More cursing then with Peacock saying how he kept getting glances of himself whenever he leaned out. The left-hand side mirror and the rear view, they went ages ago. Likewise, the dashboard clock, long since broken, the two hands held still behind the cracked glass. No more looking back, said Henderson. We're losing ourselves. We're losing all the traces, all the moments of the world, one by one. I have to keep writing. A terrible sight. Peacock pulled into a petrol station to get the tank filled up and to buy some cigarettes, some chocolate. I went with him to the little shop only to find that a small boy had been taken ill. He was lying on the floor in front of a video game, wailing, his arms reaching out wildly to push away some invisible object. His parents were standing off to one side, helpless, scared, as the garage staff tried to hold the boy still. I felt a cold, grey numbness, thinking only of Angela and her first real attack. And then I stepped forward, bringing Peacock with me. Peacock held the mouth and the tongue in the correct position, whilst I broke open three capsules, one after the other, releasing the powder direct to the boy's throat. Within a minute, he was calm again, and then... 
And then we bought our cigarettes and our chocolate bars and paid for our petrol, and we left that place behind us. I'm talking British English, aren't I? I'm talking about petrol and, and what's it? Gas, no, not gas, what's it? Petrol stations, service stations. Oh, it's really funny, it's weird. Do you like the British English? Yo, Grace is Jacob Einside. Tubular. Do you know what? I don't even know how to pronounce it. What was it? Is it is it Tupelo or Tupelo? You know, British British English. Well, like we tend to um, pronounce. <clears throat> is it T U like a like a chew? Chew Tupelo Tupelo. Let me know in the chat. Nos, if you're still there, spell it out, baby. I think Nos is gone. After I said I didn't love him anymore, <laughs> he ran away. Ah, uh, uh, oh dear. What do you think though? It's, it's good, isn't it? It's a good story. Just getting into the book. Good evening to you all. I hope you're well. I hope you're Genki. Everything's still going. Five, five by five. Zach's better than, better that than any more isom. <laughs> you, did you get isom salty? I don't know. I've, I haven't read it. You know, I, I've, I've kind of stayed away from all the, uh, the flack. Is the right? Is that the right word that's been going on about that between? EVS and uh, Eric July and you know whatever I just kind of like yeah whatever but you know you can't knock Eric July for putting that out and you know having a real success and making all that money all that moolah all that moolah all that dosh tubular 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 thanks for your monarch I like your girl voice grey <laughs> do you know what Jacob it's like I'm still really new at doing this and I can't keep track of who the characters are. I started off thinking one was a guy and I, and it was actually what turned out to be a woman. So one of the women, I think it might be Henderson. She's got a bit of a, a, Man, a Manchester uh, guy's voice. And so is Peacock. What a great name, by the way. Peacock. I like Peacock. He's a guy. I talk, I put, I talk Peacock like that a bit deep and, you know, a bit rough. A bit rough and ready. And uh, Henderson's gone from, all right, how's it going to... All right, how's it going? <laughs> a little bit higher. I don't know. Oh, dear. Did you get Isom on sale, Fear Monarch? Yeah, the reason I didn't bother and the reason why I don't really touch crowdfunding anymore is because, and you all know this, the postage, man, the shipping, it's like, if the, if the books say $20, $25, the shipping's 30 or 35 or, you know, it can, it can even go up to $40 just for the shipping. So you're paying almost double for the shipping to Japan, I think that's the same for the UK as well. I don't know about the States. I don't know about Europe, Australia, I don't know. The cheapest one I ever got was I, I backed a campaign from a guy, Michael Bancroft in um, Australia, a book called The, the Lucent, The Lucent, L-U-C-E-N-T. And it's good, it's decent. He's a good artist. Pretty good story, it was all right. But that was the cheapest one. I think that cost me about, it was about 15 it might have been $15 shipping from Australia to Japan, you know. But yeah, like paying $30, $35, $40 for, for postage. Salty, I'm sure you know about that, man. It's crazy, isn't it? It puts you off. And I'd love to back a lot more of these um, projects. I really would. And getting more and more these days into the kind of small presses, not just crowdfunding. Like, um, I want to get stuff from the UK as well. You know, I've recently discovered a really good British comic book podcast called... The Awesome Comics Podcast, you know, original original name, but it's it's easy to remember, ACP. The Awesome Comics Podcast. It's three British guys. I think they are comic book creators as well, you know, of course, indie um, crowdfunding creators and maybe my age or a little bit older, but their, their knowledge is unbelievable. And it's good to listen to that as well as the American comic book um, podcast I listen to. You know, I like getting getting to hear what's going on in the UK because of course I do miss it at times you know like anybody would you, you do not so much homesick this is my home now where I am in Japan but you know I miss the culture I miss the the crack I'm not that kind of crack c-r-a-i-i-c key you know c you know i sorry c-r-a-i-c the Irish what's the crack what's the crack that kind of thing I miss the the banter I miss the fun I miss the culture I miss the beer I miss just going into my local comic shop and just browsing, mooching around, having a good time. You know, I just miss that. And I can't easily get independent small press comic books from the UK because they, they won't ship to Japan. 
you know, can you blame them? The, the price of postage, so. Okay, Salty saying, um, I've got, okay, Purple, Purple Valkyrie, brilliant. She's um, sending me UK comics and mailing them. If you want something, I can forward it. Oh, mate, Salty, appreciate it, mate. You, you're always so generous. Don't worry about it. It's good, it's good. There's nothing that, that springs to mind, but I'm just saying, like, but I recommend it. I will put that. I was in the middle of typing out, wasn't it? The Awesome Comics. I think it's Awesome Comic Podcast or Comics. I'm not sure if it's got an S or not, but have a look for it. They're on Podbean, and it's it's really good. It's funny. Like, they put, like, not safe for work. You know, there's a bit, but there's not that much. There's a bit of swearing, but it's just, like, three, three lads, you know, three grown lads, comic book nerds, having, having a laugh and talking about and recommending good series. They don't tend to cover much of the mainstream, so that's why I'm enjoying reading the not reading, listening to them. You know, because I say I'm I'm diving into indie and fear monarch. Part of this is you as well, mate. You know, I appreciate your recommendations, which I talked about on the last um, pick of the week, Grace Pick and Mix. Really good. I'm really getting into um, Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees. It's only three issues. Yes, it's uh, anthropomorphic characters, you know, it's furries, as some people have said, but it's really good writing. And it's a great kind of creepy, small town murder atmosphere going on. Also, um, oh my God, I'm forgetting the name. What's the um, that awesome fantasy one that I just, I gave my book of the week to and did a review of? <laughs> Total stream brain. Something about dusk beneath, beneath the... <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, help me, help me, help me, Obi-Wan. You're my only hope. Help me, Fear Monarch. You're my only hope. I'm trying to type and I've not even clicked on the chat. Oh my, Jesus, it's all going crazy. Help me, somebody. You're my only hope. As my, as my stomach goes, my stomach's going crazy. Uh, not Blood Rick, but that was awesome. Oh, Jesus, I'm going to have to check it on. This is doing my head in now. Here we go. What surprised me about this series, it's it's by G. Willow Wilson. G. Willow Wilson. I know, I know before you all jump on me and kill me. That's it, I got it. The Hunger and the Dusk. Salty, I'm sure you'd enjoy it. It's orcs and humans trying to forge an uneasy alliance to take out a new, a new threat. That is crazy, like killing race that come over and just start, you know, butchering everybody. So the hunger and the dusk. IDW as well, which is another surprise, and it's good. It's up to issue six, though, so it's just finished the first run, the first story arc. They're taking a break until the summer, hopefully, but you never know with IDW, with what I've heard about that company. They could be going under. I don't know for sure. They could be going under. Yeah, you're good. Come in, come in. Don't worry. Mrs. Wack is actually just coming in. Everyone say hello. Oh, no, she can't. She can't hear you. <laughs> no speakers on. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? Are you making a coffee? That would be awesome. Oh, no, no, it's okay. You're making tea for your student. Okay, I'll just drop a clip. Just let me mute myself. As long as you're not using the microwave, I don't mind. <laughs> Guys and girls, you know that microwave. It's unbelievable. It's crazy. Where are they? Where's my mute? I can't mute it. Let me drop a clip quickly. Come on, Gray. Where are your clips? Stay away from that trap door. Oh, sniff that. What do you guys do if you're streaming like and you, you know, don't stop the stream, just pause it. Do it. Should I just take a chill pill and not worry? You don't mind the background noise, do you? Dude, you want floppies from that series too? No, 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 it's good. I'm good, Salty. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Tack, someone's saying, bang, bang the pots and pans. <laughs> bang the pans <laughs> in the background. <laughs> there we go. Hunger and the Dusk. It's really, it's really good. It's um, good character writing. It's a great world that, that she's kind of built up there. It's good art by um, an artist called, is it Chris Wild Goose? What an awesome name that is. If you've not checked out my my review, I recommend it. I really do. Hey, I could do that while while Mrs. W is making the coffee. Let's see. Can I um, can I share? I can share part of that review, can't I? Let's get rid of that. Trapdoor clip. Let's change it for something else. Come on, Gray. You can do this. You've got a braid, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I think I deleted the video. He deleted the video. <laughs> How cool is that? 
Um, I've not really got anything on. Like, don't worry about the noise. I'm just joking. I'm just kidding. I don't think I've got anything that long I can share with you. Where are we? <laughs> Ladies, do you have anything long that you can share with me? Where are we? Uh, let's look at some of the, the videos from this year. Ah, no, I didn't keep a copy. Never mind. That's all right. Should we go for a blast with the past from, from my very first ever videos? Do you want to have a laugh? Let's just play a little bit from one. Don't worry, I'm not going to subject you to it all. Let's see if this even works. Um, where are we? Mm. Not Sandman. No, what's, what's an early one? I don't really have that many. I didn't really keep that many. Ugh. Spawn 3, 4, 8. No, these are all recent. A book review. How about that? Yeah, a book review during a book stream. Check this out. I don't even know this is going to work. Is it working? Hey, konnichiwa, Minasan. It's Gray from Akazashi's Tea House over in Japan. How are you doing? Are you good? Are you Genki? Okay, I've got something different today. I have a book review for you. This is a fantastic book, in my opinion. It's maybe a little-known book. It was released back in 1980. It's by the author Walter Tevis, and it's called Mockingbird. Now what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to read from my uh, blog review, which I wrote last year. Oh no, wait a minute, two years ago, believe it or not, January 2021, this is what I had to say about this book. Okay, a bit of background first. Have you seen the Netflix series, The Queen's it's maybe Gambit, a little known book. about it a brilliant was released female back in 1980. Player. I watched it, I really enjoyed Walter it. Tevis. Um, who's in that? Is and it? It's called Mockingbird. Anna, Anna Taylor now, what Joy. I'm do with this, I'm going to read from book. my anyway, blog review, um, which I wrote based on the book, the same name. No, wait a minute, two years ago. I used to be so January 2021. This is what I had to now, say. I'd never heard of Tevis before. Before I started the series. Have you seen the title of the series? The Queen's Gambit. It's a little known book. 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 Now, I've seen the video of this going to read from my movie, anyway, blog review, which the book. based on the book, the same you name, I've read it this, same author as this, I've read it this, same author as this, I've read it this, same author as this, I've never heard of Tevis before, before I saw the series, first. but I didn't know the title of the series, the Queen's Gambit, a little known book, it was released in 1980, the man who fell by... I can't stop it! I think I've stopped it, okay, I fixed it, I fixed it, that was crazy! I have no idea. Has it stopped now? Oh dear, that was crazy. Let me know if it stopped. I switched off the desktop audio, that's where it was going on. Do you know, I still don't know how that works. With OBS, it, it, it only happens on OBS and it's like, um, it just starts repeating the video from the beginning over and over again, but it, that shouldn't happen because I had, oh, I got it, because I turned, the audio one on YouTube. That's it. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> Is it okay now? Let me know in the chat. I'm getting really paranoid because I'm not listening to the stream. <laughs> Somebody tell me. So we've got some ASMR in the background. We've got the coffee percolating next to me. You can't see it, but it's just there. Got Mrs. Wakizashi making a nice cup of tea for a student. <laughs> Thanks, Salty. That was really cool. Come on. You never know what you're going to get with my streams. It's it's absolutely awesome. Oh, God. So, yeah, whatever you do, don't try to share a video and then un unmute the audio on YouTube to listen to it. Oh, God, that was hilarious. Oh, dear. You guys, you, you guys were killing me in the chat. It's like, Gray, make it stop. For God's sake, what are you doing? Ah. Uh, Let's refresh ourselves with this instead. Look at this, listen to this, a bit of Akira. This will wake you all up with some blasting music. Okay, so anyway, that might, <laughs> I just gotta keep waffling with you guys. So let's see where we're up to. I had to refresh, I thought my computer was having a fit. The coffee there, I promised. Yeah, guys, don't worry. If you wanna, if you wanna bounce, don't worry about it. I'm gonna keep going, but um, the coffee, <laughs> the coffee's on the background, so I can't continue uh, reading <laughs> until that finishes. <laughs> no, it's good. It's all good. Everyone loves it, don't you? 
Hearts in the chat for Mrs. Wakizashi. Ooh, you know what's weird on, on YouTube, on my live streaming page? You know that, aw that awful, that annoying icon with the hearts and the hundred and blah, blah, blah at the bottom right corner? It's black at the moment. It's black, guys and girls. Is that because um, I've, I've been reading that story about people blacking out the mirrors because of what's happened? Ooh, well, the coffee might be done. She only, she's only made a, one cup. Brilliant. That's awesome. What a star. Mrs. Wakizashi, she's done it. Excellent news. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're still here, the coffee is ready. I'm just going to grab that. While I do that, I will um, I'll drop one more clip, but I'm going to upload a new one. Don't worry. It's not going to be crazy. Oh, no, it's not finished yet. <laughs> the uh, longest clip I've got is uh, with Neil and I. Salty, Salty Traveling Sea's favorite, favorite ever. Where are we? I demand to have some booze. Here we go. Just mute the mouth. I must have some booze. I demand to have some booze. I wouldn't drink that if I asked you. Why not? Because Why not? I don't advise it. Even the wankers on the site wouldn't drink that. That's worse than meth. Nonsense. This is a far superior drink to meths. And there we have it. Okay, it's almost done the coffee. Still here. This is my favourite motorcycle chase in the movie. Yes, Jacob. I mean, there's so many, aren't there, in, in Akira? There's so many great scenes. It's like, you know, where, where do you stop? Unbelievable, right? Absolutely gorgeous movie. I love it. I could just keep watching clips from that, you know, for the rest of the stream. But I'm blabbering on until the coffee's ready. Mr. W gave me a nice pink cup. What's she trying to say? Does anybody know? What's she trying to say? So where will we up to? Let me just find my place on the Kindle. I got this on Kindle, by the way, because it was only 575 yen, which is, Jesus Christ, <laughs> coffee, coffee machine. Shh. It's unbelievable. It's, it's percolating like off its head. It's going insane. It's got to be the longest ever coffee being made, I think, in the history of the world. Okay, who wants a coffee? I'll pour you one out if you'll pour me a shot of bourbon or a nice shot of uh, scotch. <laughs> it's the best stream ever. Best stream ever. Still going. Guys, help me. My co coffee machine's going to kill me. It's trying to attack me. Unbelievable. What are you doing? Have you stopped? Have you finished? You know that moment when it stops and then starts again, just to like piss me off. DJ Ronnie G. Oh, brilliant. DJ Ronnie G has been a member for 13 months. That is absolutely brilliant. That is absolutely awesome, mate. Let me find you a proper clip for that. And don't worry, it's not with Lel and I. It's going to be something else. This is turning into a stream of clips. Um, I don't know why I'm shouting. I just, I'm so excited because... What do you call it? The coffee's actually stopped screaming. Screaming at me. Help me. Help me, DJ Ronnie G. You're my only hope. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Sorry, Dave. I can't do that. No. I'm sorry, Dave. I can't do that. I can't do it. How great is Hal, Hal's voice in 2001? I love it. So cool. So amazing. Let's have a look. It's not that bad, just like someone off camera peeing in a bucket. <laughs> Salty. That's classic. Um, Fear Monarch saying, that's my dishwasher. It goes quiet. And then it goes into overdrive. Always when you try to stream or try to record something, right? Oh, dear. It's time for the percolator. Dempsey singing. Brilliant, Dempsey. I th can you make a track with Grey's percolator going off in the background? The thing is, like, it's making me paranoid because it's finished, but it... 
I'm sure it still has like a weird beep when it's finally. There it goes. Yes, we got it. We got coffee, fresh coffee. Come on, bring it with me pink cup. Oh, mate. I tell you, I'm having a blast. It's like you're all in the room with me or something. It's like we're, we're, down, we're down at the pub having a, having, a, having a chat, shooting the shit. I was going to pour it right near the mic, but knowing the way I've been going today, I'll probably pour it all over the mic and my keyboard. So there we go. Ooh, sniff that. Oh, it's good. It's a good one. Would you like me to pour you a cup? Just let me know in the chat. There we go. I've turned off now. Turned off. Tuned in. No. Turned off, tuned out and dropped in. Did you like that? Not really. Okay, where were we? Ladies and gentlemen. How's it go? Ladies and jelly spoons. Let's get back to the uh, book. But yeah, guys, I really appreciate it. Fear Monica as well. Shout out to the members. Zax, you're still a member, aren't you? I think so. <gasps> I hope so. Yeah, look at that. Amazing. Zax has got the Shokasugi moniker. That's brilliant. Fear Monica has the, the Wakizashi tea, tea cup, not the tea house, a tea cup with a Wakizashi through it. DJ G has a Shokasugi too. Shokasugi, ninja movies from the 1980s. Come on. Canon. Canon, the Canon group. Don't you miss those days? Salty. Come on, man. Should I get back to it? Okay, sorry about that. Black, double sugar. Cream, no sugar. I take mine straight and black, like my women. That's me, I'm just saying. Good night, sir. Good night. Thanks for popping in. Ronnie G, love you, bro. You have a good one. Have a great, great weekend. It's Saturday, 2.38 p.m. here in Japan. The sun is shining. I'm going to go for a walk down by the sea. I might even cycle there. I've been driving recently, driving down to the sea and walking because of the weather's been crap, but it's actually sunny. It's cold. It's a bit parky, as we say, up north in, the, in Britain. A bit parky out. It's a bit parky, but the sun's out. Sky's blue. A great day to go down by the sea. So... I'm just going to go on for a little bit more. My plan was about 90, 90 minutes maximum. If you're still here, that'd be fantastic. Um, I tell you, I still can't believe anyone's even tuning in. Who wants to listen to me? I do, says Gray. Trouble is, like sometimes drinking coffee and doing a, <clears throat> a reading, I get the weird frog in the throat syndrome. That's why I made tea originally. I've still got half my tea. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know why I asked for a coffee. <laughs> oh, Jesus. What am I like? The cause of my own downfall. So where were we? I still don't know how to say Tupelo. Tupelo. I've heard... Um, that reminds me of a Nick Cave song. Tupelo. Isn't that where Elvis Presley was from? The King. Good night, Jacob. Straight and black like the arrow that put down smog, says Dempsey. I like that, Dempsey. That's very poetic. That's awesome. <laughs> no, I've just been stupid, Jacob. I've just been silly. Um, I like my women. Asian. Let's just say that. Any colour. Any kind, any colour. No problem. As long as the women. Just saying. Okay? Okay? There we go. I don't want no crying game surprises, all right? All right? Thank you very much. <laughs> You know what I mean? Uh, to buy some cigarettes. So that was it. I just that's what started, it, wasn't it? So yeah, they they went. They found a boy. He was having an attack. We still don't know what what this weird um, disease contagion is, which is causing people to go crazy. Or it's not a zombie thing, but there's something to do with mirrors, where people are blacking out any kind of mirrored or reflective surface. It's going to come into it, hopefully. And they stopped to buy cigarettes in a chocolate bar. A chocolate bar. You Yankees, you say candy bars, don't you? What's that all about, by the way, before I carry on? Candy? Candy's like um, hard sweet, isn't it? You know, that you, that you suck. Nodo ame in Japanese, nodo. Nodo is throat and ame is sweet. Throat sweets, throat drops. Candy? Candy bars? Come on, the chocolate bars. For God's sake. <laughs> and with that, the table started squeaking. Did you hear that? Oh, it's, not, it's not doing it now. 
Okay. Okay, one more sip of coffee. Uh, Gray wants to bring the only sausage to the party, says Salty. <clears throat> now I'm, I'm going to try and remember all the, the flipping voices I'm trying to do for the characters. Here we go. <coughs> oh. We move through a series of complex road junctions and roundabouts. There seem to be too many signs erected here, too many traffic signals, a glut of billboards and panels where images danced. Neon shapes were flickering, overly bright in all their colours, and each of them demanding my whole attention. But the more I looked, the less I could see. The noise levels were too high. Dominating the landscape was a large visual display advertising the lucidity drug. It was the same eye we'd seen painted on the side of the crashed lorry. But this time, the logo was constructed from many hundreds of tiny bulbs, which flashed on and off in sequence to give the impression that the eye was opening and closing. Dear sweet Lucy, said Peacock, Fucking bastard company, said Henderson. The money they're making from this. The eye was a sharp electric blue, with the golden swirls of dust spiralling outwards from the centre. I felt I was being hypnotised by the effect. Below this image, a line of words moved across the board. I thought I saw the phrase, If you can read this, just briefly, but the letters kept dissolving into each other. What does it say? I asked. Can't you read it? said Henderson. No. There was a silence then, inside the car. What does it say? Yes, what does it say? It was the girl, Tupelo, who finally answered me. If you can read this, she said, it means you're alive. If you can read this, it means you're alive. I was looking through the earlier pages of my journal, the ones abandoned, sitting in the car, using the torch that Tupelo had brought with her, trying to find the passage where I described my last telephone call to the hospital. It would be somewhere near the beginning. When this journey first started, and before I met Henderson and Peacock, I would spend long nights in hotel rooms alone, writing, just writing remembering, as I could, all the details. They seemed important back then, the details. The word slid by under the beam of light, manic and scarred. Where was it? Where were the lines detailing the doctor's response? I tried to remember the call itself. Where had I been? Away on a job somewhere, that would be it. There was that final visit, and I was tired. Weary and numb from staring at the video screens all day and all night, hoping for some sign for my daughter, and seeing only the poor girl wandering her bare white room, or else immersing herself in the isolation tank, the soft liquid enfolding her body. There was nothing I could do there, and I had to admit that to myself... There was nothing I could do there, and I had to admit that to myself finally. There was only the waiting, which took forever, and so I ran away into work, some petty writing job no doubt. But where exactly? I couldn't think, just that somehow I'd managed to find a telephone that worked. In those days, the sickness had not yet found its way completely into the network, but calls were already plagued with interference, with hiss and crackle, ghosts on the line. But still... I tried to call every day that went by to see how Angela was doing. Whispers at the other end, or many people talking all at once. It's all a question of chance. But just sometimes a stray signal would get through. I called the hospital. What was said? What did the doctor say to me that time before the line went dead? Again, I searched through the book the pages moving quickly under my fingers, back and forth. It must be here somewhere. I wrote it down. I can remember writing it down. I'm sure I did. I would have done. Condition stable. That must be it. 
Was that it? An unexpected white page in the notebook with just those two words, centre field and underlined. Are you all right? What? It's the girl, Tupelo. She was asking after me. Are you okay? You look... Leave me alone. Condition stable. The road headed down through a tunnel. Lights were strung along the ceiling, leading the way, flickering in beauty. A bird was flying ahead of us through the dark and golden light. My eyes were set to burning with the splendour of it all. Suddenly, they filled with tears. The new town seemed to have a climate all of its own. Peacock had been wrong. There were no walls around the place, no security guards. It just turned gradually warmer as we drove through the outskirts, and quieter, more serene, the closer we came to the centre. The sky was held low, trapping the night's heat in the leafy boulevards. We were late, not for the job itself, which would have to take place well after dark anyway. Kingsley had given specific instructions about that, in his last communication. However, he had also arranged that we stay overnight at the home of one of his friends, an old woman. Lady Iris, he called her. This would be our first destination. Peacock stopped to ask directions. The young man he spoke to replied in a slow, hesitant manner, as though afraid of his own tongue. During this conversation, the girl, Tupelo, got out of the car. There were no goodbyes. Miserable cow, said Henderson. The house, when we found it, was slightly apart from the main town and set on the rise of a hill. It was a large, old-fashioned place, built many years before the prefabricated units of the new community. The stonework was covered in grime. It was around eight, I suppose. Two hours or so later than expected. Kingsley, for some reason, insisted that we get there in the early evening. But I'm not very good with time these days. My watch has long since been discarded. And now the days slip by in vague periods. Such and such. Just gone. Late morning. Almost around about, early evening, and so on. Only the taking of the medicine gives any real structure to our lives. We were shown around by a man, Edward, who seems to be the servant of Lady Iris. Nothing was said about our late arrival. There was an antique grandfather clock in the hallway. The hands had been removed from the face. Edward told us, politely, that the lady of the house had already retired for the night, and that she would speak with us in the morning. It all feels quite odd, but at least I'll have my own room tonight. And this is where I am now. I've caught up with myself. Soon, we will go in search of the next precious item. I feel calm enough. A lull in my sickness has allowed these thoughts to be written down. But once again... The doubts creep in. I can only hope tonight turns out better than last night did. Peacock has a phrase he likes to use about keeping your head closed down. I will try. This is a strange household. There are no electric lights, only candles. Shadows, whisperings, something scratching behind the walls. I write sitting at an antique dressing table. An empty cradle of wood rises from the worktop. I can see the tiny sockets where the mirror should be held. On one wall of the room, there's a carved ebony frame with nothing inside it. I've noticed similar empty frames downstairs and along the quiet candlelit corridors, or else a sudden rectangular patch where the wallpaper is cleaner. The official guidelines are clear on this matter, Do not look at yourself while suffering the effects or the after-effects of the noise or the new condition, as they politely call it, because madness takes hold of your image. Most people simply turn their mirrors over to face the wall or cover them with cloth. 
In this house, however, they've all been removed. I have a sudden vision of the mysterious Lady Iris ordering dear faithful Edward in this curious task, the taking down of the mirrors. Perhaps they are keeping them all in storage somewhere until the sickness has died down or a proper cure is found. I imagine a dark cellar filled with reflections. Okay, there we go. Okay, how are we doing? One twenty. we jumped to. One hour twenty, wow. Are you still there? Are you good? Is anyone else having issues with their chat? On the stream? Really? Let me have a look. Let me check on OBS with two ticks. Um, it's showing it's fine. It's showing okay. There's no warnings on the uh, studio page, but I've been blabbering on, so I might have missed it. If I have, apologies for that. <laughs> Salty. Have you had enough, mate? Oh, I know, I know. They also call cookies biscuits. I know, right? Oh, chocolate chip cookies, though, we do have in the UK. We do call those cookies, um, but biscuits, a nice ginger biscuit or a ginger snap. How about that? Yo, you're still here. I've got 10 minutes to go. I, I think I've done enough. I'm not sure. I think I've read enough to, you know, edit out later. As I say, I'm trying to aim for 30 minutes. We'll see how it goes. It's not you, Gray, it's YouTube. Okay, nice one. Well, as I say, Salty, the, the same thing happened last time I did this, but when I did check OBS, there was a problem with the signal. It did say that. This time it's all it's all green, looks good. But you know what the good thing about OBS is that when you, it records it for you and the, the recording's fine because it's not a live stream copy. Whereas if you do it on um, you know, StreamYard or Restream or whatever, if you do it on one of those, you get the choppy stream or you know you get the audio cutouts. So that is the one good thing. That's why I'm kind of focusing on doing it on OBS, despite the uh, occasional hiccups, shall we say. So guys, before we wrap things up, what's been going on with you? Let me know. Yeah, it has been funky lately, Fear Monarch. I know, it's strange. I've, from what I've heard, it's been going on for a while. This part of it's to do with um, uh, YouTube trying to combat the ad block problems. Another part of it is like their, you know, endless updates to the algorithm, to the system. Uh, so you know, flagging certain words, phrases, things that you can't say anymore, you know, all sorts of stuff. It sounds like a crazy conspiracy, doesn't it? But I'm sure it's all true. You know, they, they, your, your information is censored, as simple as that. Zax is saying, uh, my chat doesn't update unless I switch back and forth between top and live chat. No way. That's weird. Weird! There's Miyuki for you. Miyuki! From Tokyo Godfathers. And it, here's Godzilla, but it doesn't show up, unfortunately. Godzilla! Godzilla! Anything good to recommend in the chat? Not comics. I'm still like catching up on last week's comics, but um, I've been watching. Do you know what I've been watching? I've been getting back into The Sopranos. I kind of... Excuse me, I dip in and out of that occasionally, um, but I'm I'm up to the season six. I'm ha almost halfway through the final season on the rewatch. Yeah, you know I've rewatched it a few times, but it's been a while. And I just put a couple of episodes on a few days ago after I finished watching The Bear. Zax, if you're still there, The Bear, what a great recommendation from you and Copa, and so good. It's insane. It's an insane series. It's really good. It's crazy. It's it's kind of got a darkness to it. It's a bit mean at times, but it's so well written. It's so well edited. Some of those episodes are insane, aren't they? They're, like, they're almost like leave you stressed out at the end. You know the ones. You know the ones I'm talking about, don't you? Intense like viewing, and the fact that it's only like thirty minutes. I like that thirty. You know, a nice between 25 and 30 minutes for most of them. Really good. So I'll finish the bear. And then um, I've been watching Masters, shall I do it in British? Masters, Masters of the Air, the Band of Brothers and the Pacific, kind of, not sequel, but you know, it's by the same, I think it's made by the same people, isn't it? Same production house, whatever. Uh, that's been okay. You know, it's not amazing, but I, I do like the, the dog fighting scenes, you know, the, the flight scenes. I know a lot of it's CG, it has to be, but I, I've been enjoying that. The characters... 
They've not really been written that well, I don't think. They're not really, really fleshed out as well as, you know, Band of Brothers or The Pacific. And do you know what? I've been rewatching a little bit of The Pacific. God damn Japs. Um, and I was so surprised. I'd forgotten John, John Bernthal was in it, you know, The Punisher. Like, no way. And he's in The Bear as well. He's, he's bloody everywhere. 7, 7.5 salt. Yeah, yeah, mate, I'm with you on that. Yeah, I, I agree. I was hoping it was going to be a 9. But so far, you know, it's not bad. It's just not as good as Band of Brothers. But what could be? And what are, you, what are your thoughts on the Pacific? Did you enjoy that? That's pretty pretty hard going, isn't it, at times? It's good, though. It's really good, you know, war, war story. <laughs> Where, where's my Japanese... Uh, but look at Miyuki, Salty. She's got, she's only got a smile for you. She's smiling at you. She's saying, as you call her a bastard, thank you very much. Or is it, thank you very much? <laughs> Which is a part of the Tokyo Godfathers, the movie, by the way. I'm, I'm not, I'm not being uh, funny here. I'm not being naughty. That is, that is a clip from the movie, and that's the expression she makes because she can't understand any English. She thinks one of the characters in the movie is speaking English, where he's actually speaking Portuguese to her, and she's just like, does this smile? It's like. Thank you very much. It's so cool. It's so funny. It's so Japan. Ah, Zax. Okay, that's interesting, yeah. You think the bombing runs take away from the characters. The masks don't help. Yeah, yeah. You do kind of lose... You can lose track, aren't you, in the, in the, in the bombers, like who's who a little bit. But, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's made me want to go back and watch Dunkirk for the... You know, the, the flight scenes in that, the dog fighting scenes in there. Yeah, disappointed, Jacob. Yeah, I think I think most people are. Okay, Salty, you reckon it was... I haven't finished Pacific. I never finished that one, so um, I'm kind of half watching that and um, I just got carried away with Sopranos. Sopranos has taken over because it's, it's so bloody good. It's so bingeable. It's just like, just watch, you know, just watch one more and then before you know it, Three episodes later, it's like half twelve at night, and I should have been I should have been in bed hours ago. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's what I've been watching. Big shout out to Zach's Coper and people who've recommended The Bear. It's really good if you like, you know, good writing. It's about cooking, by the way. The chef, 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 chef. But it's insane and great acting, great acting in that. Um, Master of the Airs is okay. I was watching The Brother's Son on Netflix, but I, I didn't finish it. I was enjoying that as well. It was okay. It's it's light. It's easy to watch. It's good. Some good um, martial arts in there as well. But thanks for the shout outs there. Recommendations from Fear Monarch and Angel's Egg. It was pretty good. And Evil Dead Rise is just all right. Is that is that right, Fear Monarch? Yeah. I've heard mixed things about that. I've heard some people saying it's actually good. It's better than you think. And I've heard other people saying, nah, mate, it's it's terrible. So I don't know make my own mind up and watch it for myself. You want Austin Butler back, <laughs> says Salty. Yeah, that would be good. I'm sure I'm forgetting something. Um, with Apple, I've been I'm quite enjoying some of the Apple's content. I was watching, I started watching a serial killer story called The Shining Girls, which is really, um, what's the word? It plays around with time. It's a little bit time travelly as well. It's uh, I, I half read the book years ago. I can't remember it, but so I'm watching the series. It's not bad. It's not bad so far. But yeah, as I say, the the uh, the Shining. After I finished the Bear, two seasons of that. The Shining, not the Shining, <laughs> the Shining. The Sopranos has taken over. So there we go. On that note, with Gray losing his mind and uh, spluttering, mumbling, making the uh, the stream brain errors, I will. I would say a very good no, good night to you all in the States. Uh, good morning to you in the UK and Europe, if you're still here. And good afternoon in Japan. Now, let's see if I can get one of those weird uh, loop time loops going on again. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm not going to do that. Have I, got, have I even got a closer? Members closer. Where are we? I can drop something. Um, I've got the countdown. Oh, the closer. Here it is. Just lining things up. Thank you so much for watching and for listening this far. I really appreciate it. Um, if you can drop a comment afterwards, that's awesome, but don't worry about it. It's all right. No problem. The stream will still be up until I, I make the edited version, which is what I'll be doing with the old one, and I'll probably unlist it. Because who wants to you know, watch Grey waffling on nonsense with coffee percolating in the background? Uh, 
crazy video loops of book reviews. Not me. You guys and girls have a great weekend. Take care and matane.